Shalom. Kahalayla Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shah. Bahashem Akankadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahweh, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that is scattered abroad. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. Who is Edom? <coughs> Who is Edom? So I pulled up an image of Mount Seir, which is Petra, modern day Jordan today. <coughs> and you go to a map. So you'll see there's a starch similarity between Mount Seir, Rome, Great Britain, and the White House, or D.C., because the architecture is built after the ancient Edomites, which are Romans. Edom is interchangeable with Rome. They became Rome, <clears throat> and they took over the Japhetic lands, the Etruscans, and the Minoan people. <clears throat> so they became Romans after they took over that land. Here's another image. So the Edomites are identified through Bible prophecy. And then we're making things plain upon tables through photos, pictures. This is evidence of that man of sin, the son of perdition. Spoken of in Second Thessalonians chapter 2. Whose blessing is the sword. So we're reading about him through prophecy. More photos. Mount Seir, the Edomites. And they took over the land of the Horites. Horite translate into cave dweller. Hence, we use the term caveman. <clears throat> Let's go here. So the fact that we're discussing who is he is Bible prophecy. <laughs> Let's go to the um, number one scripture. Job 9 and 24. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked he covered the faces of the judges thereof. If not, where and who is he? So he put himself up as the Savior, as the Most High. See, let's do this, God. See? So the scriptures don't lie. If not, where and who is he? Or we're looking right at him. See? They did this during the Renaissance or rebirth. They put themselves up as saviors. So we're under the 13 Illuminati families. The global elite, Romans. These are the dukes of Edom. That go back to Genesis 36. The wicked. So many of our women reverence him. Honor him. Are submissive to him. Many of our men as well. So the scriptures don't lie. <clears throat> so that was Job 9. And I want to show something here. Let's go to <clears throat> Isaiah 47. So Edom, Rome, is associated with the end, which also represents death being swallowed up and hell. <clears throat> Isaiah 47, verse 7. 
Let's go to verse 6. I was wroth with my people. I have polluted mine inheritance and given them into thine hand. Thou didst show them no mercy upon the ancient. Hast thou very heavily laid thy yoke? So yokes of chains were put upon our necks and shackles. Yokes of iron was put upon our necks, which connects to Deuteronomy 28. And he so put a yoke of iron upon thy neck. Verse 7. And thou saidest, I shall be a lady forever, so that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart, neither didst remember the latter end of it. So the end of the world is the day of the Lord, the day of judgment. So death is going to be swallowed up in victory. And this kingdom of hell is going to be devoured with fire. The latter end. Wait a minute. Whoa, let's go to second Ezra. Six and eight. And he said unto me, from Abraham unto Isaac, when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So Jacob represents life springing forth, immortality for the house of David and the remnant elect of Israel. And this kingdom of wickedness is going to be devoured by the lake of fire. Starting with nuclear missiles, followed by the laser and chariot fire from the so-called unidentified aerial phenomenon, AEP or UFOs, unidentified flying objects, which are the chariots of the Lord. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So the latter end, the end of the world, the day of judgment, the day of the Lord. Psalms, Salakia, Isaiah 47 and 7, And thou saidest, I shall be a lady forever. Lady Liberty which goes back to Semiramis of ancient Babylon. Queen of heaven worship is on full speed here, high frequency. And thou saidest, I shall be a lady forever, so that thou didst not lay these things to thy heart, neither didst remember the latter end of it. So the scriptures is going to tell us Who's being judged in the last days? Who is the first of the nations? Or at the top of the proverbial pyramid, the hierarchy, the wicked global elite. It's right here. Numbers 24 and 20. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations but his latter end shall be that he perish forever. So when you go into the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, it says Edom figures prominently as the scene of great future judgments. So how can they be done away with or loved? They're not. Numbers 24 and 20. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perished forever. So their future is destruction. Even when you go into the meaning of the word Esau, it is a nomen omen, Aisha. Or wasted. I shall shoot out. Wasted away is he. 
So even their name or destruction is inherent in their name. Read that. Ladder in. Well, whoa, wait a minute. Let's go up. We got to go up to verse 13. Let's go up. So this is Babylon in the last days, not ancient Babylon. Jeremiah 51 verse 12 set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon, make the watch strong, set up the watchmen, prepare the ambushes, for the Lord have both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. What's heavy about this is this is already done or written in decree. The Most High has determined the end at the beginning, but it must play out on earth. So it's already written on the heavenly tables or decreed. <laughs> Jeremiah 51 and 12. Set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. Fire. Make the watch strong. Set up the watchmen. The prophets are watchmen. Prepare the ambushes. These other nations are joining together to attack the daughter of Babylon, America. The BRICS nations. A company or multitude of nations led by a captain. Gog Magog, or Russia, with its allies, Iran, Libya, Ethiopia, Turkey, over 40 African nations, India. There's, there's a list of them. So the nations of the East prepare the ambushes, for the Lord have both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon. Watch this. Jeremiah 51 and 13. O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come, and the measure of thy covetousness. So the chief of the nations is ruling over the daughter of Babylon in the last days. Let's go back to it. Numbers, numbers 24 and 21. And he looked on verse 20. And when he looked on Amalek, he took up his parable and said, Amalek was the first of the nations, but his latter end shall be that he perished forever. So he is ruling over America in the last days. Remember, the Rothschilds purchased America back in the early 1800s. So it is a business corporation now under maritime law, international and maritime law underneath the beast of the European Union and NATO. <laughs> That's why it has a president. It is a corporate industry now. O thou, Jeremiah 51 and 13, O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come, and the measure of thy covetousness, and the measure of thy covetousness. So it's built up wealth through international trade, foreign military sales, invading other lands and going after their natural resources. See? So it is the mother of covetousness, witchcraft, bloodshed, <clears throat> idolatry, rebellion. Jeremiah 51 and 13 again. O thou that dwellest upon many waters, abundant in treasures, thine end is come, and the measure of thy covetousness. 
So it sits on many different nations. That's why it dwell upon many waters. Let's go here to verse 31 or 30. So it is associated with key takeaways. It's associated with the Edomites and the end of the world are the key takeaways, the big so what. Let's go here. Jeremiah 51, verse 20. Oh, I want to get right to the key point. Jeremiah 51, verse 31. One post shall run to meet another, and one messenger to meet another, to show the king of Babylon that his city is taken at one end. There's the one that I want. Let's go to verse 33. Whoa, this is about to get spicy. Jeremiah 51 and 33. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon. See, so this is not ancient Babylon, but a future kingdom, America. Jeremiah 51 and 33. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, the daughter of Babylon is like a threshing floor. It is time to thresh her. Yet a little while and the time of her harvest shall come. So that threshing is the nuclear missiles pounding her. What is the harvest? The harvest is the end of the world, which is associated with a kingdom of death, sickness, and decay being swallowed up or terminated. See, let's go here. Matthew 13. Let's go to verse 39. Verse 38. Matthew 13 and 38. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. So the wicked ones are the Edomites. When we read Malachi 1 and 4, Job 9 and 24, the enemy that sold them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world. And the reapers are the angels, the so-called UFOs or the chariots of the Lord. So Esau is associated with, with the last ruling kingdom, the revised Roman Empire, Edom, Rome. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, the Israelites elect. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. The wicked are the Edomites. The enemy that sold them is the devil, the deceivers slanderers, and false accusers. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels, the so-called UFOs, the chariots of the Lord. All right? So the wicked one, well, we need to go here first about that wicked one, and we'll get ready to close out. We have to go to Jeremiah 49. So the Old and New Testaments complement each other. <clears throat> Jeremiah 49, verse 10. So the fact that we are discussing him is fulfilling Bible prophecy. He's being exposed, starting with Amalek or the Tic Tac hats. Jeremiah 49 and 10. But I have made Esau bear. I have uncovered his secret places, and he shall not be able to hide himself. His seed is spoiled, and his brethren, and his neighbors, and he is not. He's going to become nothing. 
but servants, handmaids, and concubines, slaves. Verse 11, leave thy fatherless children, I will preserve them alive, and let thy widows trust in me. For their women are going to become concubines, and their children are going to be servants. So we'll close out here, the wicked one. So Paul was speaking about Rome in cold while under them. So he used subtility, gal. He supplanted the Romans. Let's go here to 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 7. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. So Yahweh Shai is coming back with the hosts of heaven, the angels of the Lord, these so-called UFOs, are the chariots of fire, the chariots of the Lord. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So these chariots glow. They look like flying light bulbs or orbs, glowing orbs. And they have a multicolored rainbow light spectrum around them that they can give off. So that's the brightness of his coming. And they're going to be emitting high energy, high energy concentrated laser beam fire. But right now, prophecy is consuming the wicked that covered the faces of the Israelites, our Lord and Savior, and the Most High. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. Artificial intelligence, the synthetic medical industry, the pseudoscience and false educational system, fabricated history, changing, changing paintings, whitewashing, paintings, using medicine and media in order to in order to create a delusion of truth, falsifying everything. So when you look at the term doctor or to doctor something up, it goes into falsification. So everything this kingdom is built on is pseudo or similar, or fake, or artificial, AI, falsified, doctored up. But ultimately, their technology, even the Romans, use weapons that would catapult fire. <clears throat> we got to go ahead and read that again and close out at 10. 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 9, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. So many people are being deceived by this man, pharmaceuticals, and his media, and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. Most people trust him because he is seared in their mind as the savior, the mighty ones, the great ones, the most high, successful, powerful. He's literally on the money. A lot of our women, they bow down and submit to this man because through hypergamy, they're looking for 
the power holder, the stakeholders. The bottom line. So that's pretty much it. We'll read this again. Second, second Ezra 6 and 9. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that follow it. So we're in that end right now. Leading up to the day of the Lord, which lines up with Isaiah 63 and Isaiah 34. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, or Kadash. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Palm Yashuala and the Bible. We got next, Lord willing. Barack and Thumb.